for women with disabilities, we find it difficult to settle down maritally because of the attitudinal barrier. Ah, she has a disability. She cannot have sex. She cannot even bear children. Whereas it's not true. I have many friends of mine that have given birth to children. And they have different types of disabilities. Some of them are physically challenged. Some of them are visually impaired. Some of them are hearing impaired. And some of them are women with albinism. They have given birth. Welcome back to Africa Science Focus, the weekly science and development show from SciDevNet. I'm Ogechi Kianyao. We're back for our Science Explained series, and this week we examine the barriers women with disabilities face in accessing the sexual and reproductive health care services they need. Women with disabilities in the Sub-Saharan Africa region often encounter obstacles in accessing health infrastructure. They are stigmatized and often lack awareness about sexual and reproductive health care issues. Surprisingly, these challenges persist despite the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which advocates for equitable opportunities in quality health care. You were just listening to Lois Auta Udokanta, the founder and president of the Network of Women with Disabilities in Nigeria. Her organization addresses the poor knowledge of reproductive health issues and empowers women and girls with disabilities to advocate for their rights. She trains these women to demystify misconceptions about disability and sex. Lois, who is a person with disability, shares her story and negative societal reception she faces as a woman with her reporter, Ijama Ukazi. I was affected by polio when I was two years old. I grew up and found myself differently from other children within my home, my compound, my school, my church and anywhere I found myself then. So inferiority complex set in. I refused to mingle with children of my age, in my class, and other places. Until my mom sat me down one day and said, Lois, listen to me. You have to be a strong girl for me. You have to be grateful to God for treating you this way. You have to be proud of yourself and you have to be confident that yes, this happened for a reason. So she began to give me some orientation and it really worked because 40 years afterward, here am I, a global leader, a global citizen, a Mandela Washington fellow, and many other women of the first, I mean, peace sitter. So, and one thing with my myself and my disability is I see my abilities more than my disability. Polio only affected my legs, but it can never stop me from going to where I want to be, from achieving my dreams. Polio or disability is a blessing to me and not a cost. She says her experiences led her to establish the network of women with disabilities. The culture the tradition, the patriarchal system of treating women in Nigeria, in Africa, and other parts of the world has inspired me. As women with disabilities, 15% of persons with disabilities in, in this country are women and girls with disabilities. And we are excluded in many sectors. Women with disabilities go through various challenges barriers and difficulties accessing health, sexual reproductive health rights. Women and girls with disabilities pass through triple jeopardy. We are treated as third class citizens. Yes, third class. Because we are women. Secondly, we are women with disabilities. And lastly, the barriers that are stopping us from living independent lives? Is it infrastructural barrier? Is it institutional barrier? Is it medical barrier? Is it attitudinal barrier? Economic barrier? They are many. Most of the challenges is having 
sexual and reproductive health services because women and girls with disabilities are the poorest of the poor. They find it difficult to to access hospitals, for example, those in wheelchairs. And I'll never stop to share this story when one of my friends who was pregnant, she's a wheelchair user, she went for antenatal. She was attended to on her way out of the hospital. She fell off from the staircase. And that was how her pregnancy got lost. She miscarried. As a disability rights advocate, Lois discusses the challenges women with disabilities encounter in accessing reproductive and sexual health services in Nigeria. And she also shares with us how it can be addressed. We need to keep on talking. We need to keep the, keep um, creating awareness, sensitizing the public that disability can happen to anybody at any time. It didn't happen to you in your early age. When you are old, it might happen to you. Just like someone used to say that um, once you are alive, they have not stopped um, creating you. So we need to keep on the advocacy. Another one is um, implementation of policy. We have Nigerian Disability Act that 5% of all opportunities should be reserved for citizens with disabilities. We have the United Nations Convention on the Right of Persons with Disabilities and beautiful legal frameworks that we have. So we need to, to keep on reminding all these filmmakers and other key actors to ensure that these policies are implemented. At the grassroots level, we should keep on talking about those issues. Let's talk to our women, our traditional systems on the right of women and girls with disabilities accessing family planning services. So we can come up with ideas or projects or radio stations to be able to incorporate those that have not gone to school, that they don't understand English. And uh, another one is to keep reminding stakeholders at governance level to make inclusive health a priority in all their agendas. And another one is health workers should be trained on monthly baby and uh, monthly basis or quarterly basis. And they should know and be aware of the needs, the challenges, the difficulties of women and girls with disabilities accessing healthcare services and facilities. Salome Net, Executive Director of Heart to Heart Inclusive Education Foundation and an inclusion champion on SightSaver's Inclusive Family Planning Project, discusses the cultural barriers faced in northern Nigeria, a region known for its conservatism. You know, in this part of the country, we are so much uh, cultural people. You know, we we are answerable to our husbands, absolutely, and to the families. When I say family, the head of the family and the mother-in-laws. So sometimes if your mother-in-law does not permit, you cannot go to the hospital, even during delivery. You cannot. Even if your husband says yes and the mother-in-law says no, or the father-in-law, you cannot go because the culture does not permit you to disrespect them or whatever instruction is given to you. So with that, you cannot just go to the hospital. And uh, also, if your husband is not around, supposing you are in your house with you and your husband alone and he is not around, the culture does not permit another man to give you, to assist you or even another person without your husband's being there. You cannot go out of the house. So you are restricted somehow if you are on that level about to deliver, not to talk about going for antenatal care or to access any other services. Then coming to 
family planning uh, services. Culturally, you cannot go, you can't take that decision because it has to be from your husband or your mother-in-law.